All right, it is tier list time. We are going to be ranking my favorite places to deploy React applications to. So given you have a React project, and we're going to be starting with static, and then we're going to be moving into server-side rendered React apps, where should you deploy it to? That's the question we're going to answer. So I'm going to rank all these services you see here from best to worst. And we're going to be starting with the top rank, which is S tier, and D is our worst tier here. And again, we're going to be starting with static. And by static, it means something, a React app you made with, for example, could be Gatsby, could be Create React App, something like that, where when you build the project, all you're given is static HTML, CSS, JS. Now compare that to like a Next.js project where you're doing server-side rendering, where you actually need to use a server. All right, those are two different things. You're going to deploy them to two different places. So we're going to start with where you do for static and what I like the best, and then we're going to go through what I like best for server-side rendering. All right, let's go ahead and begin. So I want to start with my favorite, which is Netlify for sure. This guy is in a category of its own right now. Not only is it super easy to use, but just from the feature department, it's kind of beating out everyone right now. The one thing that I think you're going to be hard pressed to find with the other options is really easy way to redeploy. Um, if you mess up or you want to go back to an earlier version, Netlify makes it super easy. So for example, this is the list of all my uh, deploys for this particular project. I can see when I deployed it, what the commit message I use for that particular deploy. And I can see right now I have this deploy published. Now I can click on another deploy here and I can just push publish deploy and that's going to deploy this project um, and bam. And now the production site is using this deploy from earlier. It's just that easy. You also can preview deploys. Um, they make it super easy to like in parallel view your site and split test. Um, so I love that. And not only that, they just have a lot of other things that are matching everyone else. Make it very easy to add HTTPS to your site. Um, and it's very easy to hook up with GitHub or GitLab or whatever your provider is. You just push your code up and it deploys to Netlify. It's super easy. So if there's one place I would recommend starting with, go with Netlify to deploy your React projects. You're not going to regret it. All right, let's go to our next option. So let's talk about AWS here. Now, I don't know where I want to really put this guy. Normally, I put this guy in like a, a D tier or a C tier, probably a C tier, um, because deploying to S3 um, is definitely doable, but it requires more work. For example, let's say I want to put a CDN in front of AWS and S3. Normally, you would have to, you know, set up Cloudflare or set up uh, Cloud, uh, what's it called? Not Cloud, CloudFront, that's what it's called, is the AWS version. Netlify just comes baked with that. So that's the other thing. A lot of things just come baked with Netlify. You don't have to worry about, and I love that. Um, but they recently came out uh, with this Amplify thing, right? Amplify is their, their way of like taking the services and automating it. So it's actually a lot easier to set up a static website with AWS right now. Um, so I actually kind of want to put this guy in like, I'm thinking like a, an A or a B tier right now. We're going to stick him B tier for now, and we'll come back to him and see where we put everyone else. Um, but this guy normally would be lower, but because they made Amplify, all you do now is you point it to a GitHub repository, and it deploys the app for you. Like, it's a lot easier to deploy now um, than what it used to be with S3. All right, next one is Azure, and I'm going to do Azure and Google Cloud together. All right, these guys are going to be C and D tier. Um, they're definitely doable. You can definitely deploy them to it. But as far as the ease of setting it up and what you get, uh, I don't think they're your best options. And I would put AWS with them, um, except AWS is making it a little bit easier. Um, I haven't actually tried deploying either of these guys. I assume you just use the cloud storage that they have to put static files. But if they have something to make it a little bit easier, then they can bump up to here. Um, but as far as cloud providers, I'm not a huge fan of deploying static stuff here, at least my website stuff, you know, my HTML, my CSS, my JS. All right, next up is VPSs, so virtual private servers. So this is like DigitalOcean, Linode, and Vulture. By the way, Vulture got a new little logo here. Um, so if you don't know what that looks like, it's V-U-L-T-R, 
Vulture. I, did, I, I didn't recognize the logo when I first saw it. Um, so that's what I'm talking about. So these guys right here, you basically just get a server and you can set stuff up. And I would say these are probably the worst option um, if you are looking to do uh, static websites. I think it's just the most effort that you have to put in. And uh, you, you basically are just given a server and you have to set everything out yourself. So I think they're great if you want to practice that sort of thing um, and just like a fur funsies sort of thing um, but I would not want to go through it if I was actually building an application it's going to take way longer um, and I would say not worth so these guys at least for static I would not recommend I think they are the worst choice by far um, all right let's move to the next guy so firebase firebase is interesting because I have never tried it so I actually have no idea um, all I know is they have a firebase static hosting thing in Bobber. And I'm assuming it's going to be like around here. I'm assuming it's going to be kind of similar to the AWS ease of use. So I'm going to stick it right here. But I have never tried him. All right, next is GitHub, GitHub pages, or sorry, GitHub, GitLab pages. Because GitLab now has a similar service for this. And I would stick this guy about A tier. Um, oh, you can't really see him very well. Um, I would say he's definitely worse than Netlify. Um, but I would say he's probably a little bit easier um, than these guys down here. They're de it's definitely better than C and D. These guys may be on the same level. I have no idea with Firebase, um, but AWS is pretty easy to set up now. Um, but I would say I got to give it to GitHub. I think it's a little bit ahead, at least GitHub pages. I haven't tried GitLab pages. So let me know what you guys, which one's better for the pages. Um, but anyway, I think it's going to be something like this. Um, basically, you can set up HTTPS now. You can very easily set up deploys with branches. Um, and so I think that's it earns an A tier because it's very easy to do. It's also free. That's the other thing we haven't really talked about. Netlify is totally free. Uh, well, at least, you know, there is a free tier. And then if you surpass it, you know. Um, the thing about GitHub that we'll say, though, is I feel like it's more for, like, a hobby project. I don't see anyone like hosting like Reddit, for example, Reddit's website on GitHub. I don't see like a large scale website being hosted on GitHub pages. I see it as more of a documentation website or a side project website. So that's something to note. I don't know if I'd necessarily deploy a real project to GitHub. Uh, I would definitely deploy a real project to Netlify and I think Netlify is good for all the use cases as well. Um, so that's the thing where I would feel more comfortable deploying a real project to AWS than I would to GitHub. So maybe these guys deserve to be on the same tier here, and maybe this guy's above. It really depends on what you're deploying. Hobby project, GitHub for sure, AWS if it's a real project. All right, last three here. Heroku, I'm gonna put him. I'm gonna put him above cloud services, and he may be on the same level as Firebase. Um, Heroku, I don't really think is a good option to uh, host static websites. I think it's great for servers and node applications and Ruby applications and that sort of thing. I just don't think it's that worth of a thing to do for static websites. Um, so I think it's probably easier to set up than these guys and definitely easier to set up than this. Um, but if you're on Heroku right now, you're going to want to pick one of these providers. They're going to be better. Um, now I will say... Maybe for a real project, a static Heroku may be better than a uh, GitHub Pages. So that's something to note. All right, Surge. So this one you may not have heard of, uh, but I like it a lot. It's basically super simple to deploy. Um, and that's one of the things that they're going for here. I think they say it's like five uh, lines, six keystrokes, and you can deploy your static website. And this guy's not. these are not also specific to React. This is really any static website you want to deploy whether you're using Vue or Svelte or whatever. All right, so I would say Surge, I'm going to put him up here. I like him a lot because he's very easy to deploy. Um, he can do it very fast. Um, so we're going to do that. Just the ease of use. If you're having trouble deploying, give him a try. He's very easy. All right, we have Now last. So Zeet Now. These guys I have never tried, so I can't really say. But what I, what I will say is I think they have the potential to be up here. Um, I think they're maybe a little bit behind Netlify, but I haven't tried them. But what I have heard is they have very similar features and very similar uh, where it's very easy to get started. Uh, so I would consider these guys possibly up here. Uh, they also, I believe they have it very easy to roll back to previous versions and that sort of thing that I really like. Uh, and also, I haven't even touched on, there's a lot of other Netlify features that they have as well that I haven't even mentioned that give it a plus, I would say. But I'm guessing now would be up here. 
but again, haven't tried them. This is just my intuition. All right, so let's talk about server-side rendering now. We've kind of just talked about static websites. So if we're talking about server-side rendering, a lot of these things just die, all right? So like, for example, Netlify does not work. Can I put them back over here? All right, we're just going to stick them in D tier because he doesn't even work. All right, he's all the way over here. GitHub Pages does not work. Uh, I believe Surge does not work. I'm not 100% on this. Uh, and who else? Firebase? I don't know. I don't know about Firebase. We'll stick him right here because I don't know if you can do server-side rendering with Firebase. Uh, all right, so let's talk about, and then also AWS, the Amplify stuff, or... Uh, they do not do server-side rendering, I don't think, but you can use other things. We'll talk about him in a second. Z's definitely going to be number one for this. You just use the next framework, and it is dead simple to deploy this guy. They have a lot of amazing features. I was really surprised by their uh, CDN that they have also working for dynamic content, um, and I think they are just basically innovating at the best top level right now when it comes to this sort of thing for server-side rendering React projects. And I also think they're just the simplest to set up. So I'm going to have to give it to now in first place and S tier for sure. And then after that, I would probably say Heroku. Heroku is very easy just to deploy a website to. Um, and so you're just going to be deploying a server and deploying a server to Heroku is very easy. Uh, and then I would say like right behind Heroku is like these guys right here. And they're services that are like, uh, what's it called? I know... Uh, Google has, uh, I believe, um, fudge, what's it called? All right, I looked it up. It's these services here, AWS Elastic Beanstalk. These things where they're basically like Heroku clones that make it easier to deploy uh, basically a server. So those are going to give AWS, Google Cloud, and Azure like right behind Heroku because they're very similar. Um, and so each one has their own version. You could also use like the VPS versions, the virtual private machines to deploy them. But I think those are going to be like right here. If we're talking about ease of deploying, I think they are in last place. VPSs are always going to be in last place because they are the most work. Um, but because they're the most work, you can also customize some things. Um, but I still think if you're going to deploy a React project, choose one of these over a VPS. I think VPS is not worth or at least going to be the most work to do. Um, and so I like these above them and then choosing something like uh, Zeet or Heroku or Elastic Beanstalk version is going to be my top choice. All right, so there you go. That is my tier list for deploying React applications. 